With the re-release of the original Resident Evil trilogy on Good Old Games, the mystery of the original Resident Evil box art lore has resurfaced. Like, who is the guy on the front? What's with the two trippy tarantulas? And why does the character look both angry and scared? Why does the gun look like somebody copy and pasted separate parts? I use sources that come directly from those involved in the creation of the game or art, if at all possible. Let's start with how we got the artwork. Well, this is the Japanese box art. The American and European releases got this. Capcom's US team commissioned Bill Sinkovitz for two pieces, actually. One we see here on the iconic original cover art, as well as a promotional comic that actually acted as a prequel and was intended to help drive game sales. The other, try as I might, I couldn't find anywhere. The best I could come up with was a description. The second piece is of Chris holding a shotgun with ravens perched atop, but it had more of a blue tint. Since YouTube is a visual medium, I've asked AI to give me a rendition of what could have been. Jeez, it's bad. Bill Sinkovich didn't base the work on the actor playing Chris Redfield, more on the concept of the protagonist. But the character on the cover is ostensibly Chris. Let's hear from the artist himself, Bill Sinkovich. He says, quote unquote, the character on the box art isn't based on anyone in reality, such as an actor. He's roughly based on a character from the game, end quote. But we can narrow that down even further. In the oral history of the cover art, Chris Kramer, Capcom's U.S. game counselor slash public relations admin, says the following. It's Chris Redfield in Bill's art. Chris was the main character marketing was focused on and was also the first playable character in early builds of the game. We know Capcom's marketing team was heavily focused on Chris. Jill as a playable character wasn't announced to the US team until after the promotional materials were already in process or near complete. So, based on these accounts, the marketing team directed Bill to create art based solely on Chris Redfield. Got it. We've now established it's Chris. But then why are there two tarantulas like on the cover versus, you know, zombies or a giant snake? Well, the US team actually only received chunks of game on a quarterly basis as Mikami's team was finishing it. So they were really having to assess the story in a sort of trickle down way. Capcom's team in charge of marketing in the US was largely unaware of vast amounts of the story until very late in the development cycle due to the way they were kind of drip fed sections of the game. When commissioning Sakinovich, Capcom asked him for creepy elements to add to the ambiance of the work. Specifically, they asked for spiders. From Bill, quote unquote, at the time I did the cover, the game's concept was still developing. So I was told to run with it, but include certain elements like spiders, etc. unquote. We don't really have a clear communication from an internal source on why they chose spiders specifically versus any of the other enemy types from the game, like dogs, yawn the snake, zombies, etc. That mystery will have to endure. We do know there were ravens on the other piece that was commissioned. I don't know about you, but when I think of the original Resi game, the first two enemy types I think of aren't necessarily spider and raven. But I could definitely see how in the flurry of meeting deadlines with the details they may have had access to that we, you know, ended up with spiders and ravens. Sinkovich's work may be familiar to you if you're a fan of Marvel or DC Comics. In fact, that's why he was chosen. Chris Kramer, you know, the uh, 
PR guy for Capcom in the U.S., was a huge fan of Bill's work and recommended they choose him when the team decided having a Marvel artist create the box art slash comic book cover was the way to go. Due to Capcom and Marvel already having a licensing relationship for games like the upcoming Marvel superheroes. Sakinovich's work has a very specific look and it doesn't really align with your standard video game box art. And while not everyone loved it, it did really help set Resident Evil apart. The director's cut was certainly a simplified take with both the toned down Chris on a black background as well as the greatest hits version with the iconic zombie head turning to look at you from the beginning of the game. But did you know the box art that we've been talking about this whole time may not have even been the original box art? That's right. Here we have the preliminary placeholder art and Boy, howdy, is it something. Of all the box art in all the world, this is one of them? <laughs> I'm sure glad they got Sakinovich involved. This concept art does not capture the survival horror vibe. More like capturing the original voice actor's line read vibe. That is to say, not great. Stop it. Don't open that door. But Chris is... If you want to know more about the behind the scenes for that one, let me know in the comments. I'd love to do a video on how we got there. So, when you look at the concept art, do you notice anything? Looks a lot like, and by a lot like, I mean a direct lift from a scene in Judge Dredd. Like someone just swapped heads. Seeing this correlation actually helps us frame where the influence for the weird amalgamation of a gun we see on the box art, you know, came from. Judge Dredd's weird sci-fi future gun and its wild lines match up almost perfectly. In fact, according to a tweet from at JJ from ROE, if we look through both the movie and Resident Evil, we can see a lot of similarities. Someone on Mikami's team definitely was a huge Judge Dredd fan. If we look at the gun from the cover art, it looks like a mismatch of like three or four different types, like part assault rifle, part shotgun, etc. But if we look at it from the perspective of it being inspired by the 1995 film Judge Dredd, then you know, the design choices make a lot more sense. That's not the only thing of note here. You can definitely see the influence of this initial box art in the final art design. Between the vertical lined wallpaper and basic pose of Chris holding the gun, it's easy to see how this informed the final product. Whether it was a sample to give Sakinovich kind of an idea of what they wanted, or if it was Sakinovich's own first draft, I haven't been able to narrow that part down. Speaking of design choices, Chris looks, well, weird. His face looks both angry and scared, as showcased by this graphic from Redditor Harry 101 UK. Honestly, this is very much a hallmark of some of Sakinovich's work, like this Joker, as well as in this Robin Williams piece, using symmetry to capture multiple emotions within the features of just one face is honestly very Sakinovich. Well, there you go. We've got all those questions answered. One, it's a whole Bill Sakinovich vibe. Two, our boy Chris Redfield is on the cover. Three, tarantulas because scary plus deadlines. Four, the duality of emotion is a Sakinovich staple. And number five, someone left a little Judge Dredd in a gun. I for one feel a lot better getting some closure. How about you? Any other deep, bewildering mysteries you've been pondering? Let me know in the comments. And as a fun bonus, if you follow the link of the oral history I've referenced and scroll to the bottom of that article, you can find scans of that original Resident Evil promotional comic to read. You know, if you don't want to spend $100 plus to buy it on eBay. 
Did you know that for just two clicks, even you can support a YouTuber like me? But seriously, like the little thumbs up icon, like right below the video, really important. If you could click that for me, it'd be dope. And that subscribe button, if you do it just right, goes all rainbow, super dope, I promise. It's cool, try it out. Sorry, this is gonna be disturbing. Oh, that video right there, that one, that one, that one's really cool. I promise you're gonna like it. Click it, try it, see what happens. If you don't like it, yell at me in the comments. Worth a shot. Okay, get that back in there. Whew. <laughs> uh, that was awkward. Um, anybody know how I, how I get out of here? Um, I'll figure that out. Uh, just click on that one video. I'll get out of here somehow, eventually. Just, uh, nope, no, that one's, yep, endless void, endless void.